Oh, they're going to love this one. Whoa! Yes, bitch, yes! Hey guys, welcome to the Chicana Boxing Podcast number three. Um, I can't believe I'm actually doing this for a third time. That's fucking wild. Cheer for me because I don't ever have this much consistency in my life with anything. But wow, you know, cheer for me, guys. And I am going to be eating currently a pan dulce right now as I'm doing this. So, you know, just go with it. Pretend it's ASMR or something because I, I haven't had breakfast. Y me quiero echar un pinche pan dulce con café. To be specific, una concha de chocolate. So a lot happened in boxing this week, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about last week's fight, which was Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence, because we all saw what happened, whether you watched it at the movie theaters, whether you actually bought the pay-per-view and now you regret it, or if you just watched the highlights on Instagram, I'm pretty sure you know that Mikey got, you know, his shit handed to him, not in the bad way, like he didn't get knocked the fuck out or anything, which is great. But it was a one-sided fight like Errol Spence at first anticipated. And I think, you know, I think I actually tweeted this too. I think I tweeted it in the first round. I was at the movie theaters. I went to the movies with my friend Fern. He bought he bought the ticket. So I was like, hey, I'll go watch at the movie theater. It was okay. I don't, you know, I, I want to be loud as fuck. And I don't think they let you do that in the movie theater. So it was okay. But I'd rather next time just watch it at home. Not that I'm paying the fucking $80 for it, but... You know, whatever. Point is, at the first round, it hit me. It, it finally hit me. So finally seeing them both in the, in the ring next to each other, it hit me. And I was like, why did we buy into this? Why did we actually think Mikey had a chance? Like, we all knew that Mikey had no chance against Earl Spence. But I think as, as time went on and we saw videos of Mikey, you know, echando putazos and on the snag videos where he's like wearing that mask and doing all this extra shit. I think we were all like, oh shit, all right. Like we were all hopeful, I think, even more hopeful. And because Mikey is who he is and the way he adapts to other opponents, we're like, well, maybe he can adapt to Earl Spence. You know, and I don't know. We bought into this shit and, and in the actual ring, the first round, I was like, yeah, no, this is not even going to be competitive at all because there's no way Mikey can get in there without risking getting knocked the fuck out immediately because as he tries to go in, he has to really, his reach is basically non-existent compared to Errol Spence. Now, I am very impressed by the way Errol Spence box. I think he did an amazing job um, basically disabling Mikey from doing anything. Mikey landed like three four good punches in the entirety of the fight and he is receiving a lot of like crazy ass criticism for it which I don't agree with I know maybe you guys I mean like Bob Arum Bob Arum called Mikey Garcia a mutt and said basically that at least Americana shows up to fight even though he's a smaller guy but you know it's not the same thing in my opinion at least I don't think Mikey had any advantages against Earl Spence zero none so, you know, I think obviously I do I do want to say that I did like the way Errol Spence was fighting, but you guys also have to realize that the way he was outboxing Mikey Garcia was because of all the advantages he had. He has all the advantages, so it's easier for him to outbox the smaller dude because of his reach, because he can just set up that jab and literally keep him away the whole time with that jab alone. So, you know... I get people that are mad at Mikey, but at the same time, I'm not mad at him completely. And, you know, fuck it. At least he didn't get knocked the fuck out. I was expecting him to get at least knocked down in the later rounds, and he didn't. So, props to him. How many people against Earl Spence can say that they didn't get knocked the fuck out or dropped? You know, not a lot. Now, I am surprised by the fact that, um, basically, I think Ring has Earl Spence now above Usyk and higher up on the pound for pound list and Mikey went hella down which I mean I don't really give a fuck a lot about pound for pound list in my opinion they just don't matter that much because every weight class is different but I did find that interesting because to me at least again in my opinion this is my podcast I give my fucking opinion here um this was just a what if for Mikey like he dared to go up and try to get a bell try to get an, a fifth division title and I get that it wasn't the smartest choice to go against someone like Errol Spence, but at the same time, I don't think Mikey has any business in the welterweight division to begin with. Maybe some, like, B, C-level guys, but we know Mikey won't fight you unless you have a belt, so 
basically, I don't think that Mikey should be getting criticism. I get now that it's mostly about the pay-per-view. How it's like, oh, well, I paid $75 for this shit. And you didn't try, Mikey. You didn't try. First of all, you knew he was probably going to get knocked the fuck out. Would you have been happier if, if you got your money's worth by him getting knocked out? Yeah, I bet you would. I, I bet most boxing fans would have because they would have said something like, at least we got a sick-ass knockout out of it. You know, but I don't know. So, yeah, I, I know Mikey lost to Errol Spence, but I don't think that proves anything against him on his other, in his own division, basically. He can still go and kick ass at 135 or 130, maybe even 140, but who knows because, you know, his his brother also has Ramirez, and I don't think that would work out. But just in general, he can still go back and act like nothing happened, basically. I think what pissed me off the most is that now that Bob Aaron met with some L.A. journalist here in Beverly Hills, he not only called Mikey a mutt, like I said, but he basically said that because of his loss to Earl Spence, a fight with Lomachenko was a fight with Lomachenko is basically not important anymore or not as, you know, badass anymore because people won't want to watch it after Mikey lost to to Errol Spence the way he did. And honestly, my respects to Bob Aaron for for being, you know, this sick ass or whatever promoter and bringing up young talent, managing young talent like good, good shit, man. But he is full of shit. I don't like that. I don't like that. And I remember at Lomachenko's media workout, he told us that, you know, there is no politics in his side of boxing, that Lomachenko is getting the big fights because this is his mandatory. Who else is he supposed to fight? But I think he knew that we were referring to, you know, the Mikey Garcias, the the Gervonta Davises of the world, you know? And and he's just like, oh, well, there's no politics. We can sit down and, and negotiate. But no, he's full of shit. And the bad thing is that Mikey is also petty. Both Mikey and and Bob Arum, they don't like each other. They obviously have bad beef in history. So because of that, none of them are going to nudge or they're not going to give in to wanting to negotiate certain things because they're just petty like that. And I already knew that Lomachenko versus Mikey Garcia was probably never going to happen, but I was hopeful that it would maybe. But now, even less, because now Bob Arum is using Mikey's you know, performance against a much, much bigger dude against them to not fight Lomachenko. And I'm just like, bro, please. Now, I did see some guy like on the comments on the Chicana Boxing Instagram say that he was, he agreed with Bob Aaron because he was not interested in in the fight anymore because if Errol Spence could outbox Mikey Garcia, then that means that Lomachenko, who's basically like the best dude, like ring IQ wise, was definitely going to just outbox Mikey Garcia altogether. And I think my friend, my friend Chris, he actually believes the same thing. He says, hey, if someone like Earl Spence, who is mostly known for his power, was able to outbox Mikey Garcia, what can we expect Lomachenko to do? Like, Lomachenko's just going to make him look stupid. And, you know, at first I was like, you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. But at the same time, here in this this particular fight now Mikey's the one that has the advantages now Mikey's the one with the longer reach now Mikey's the one that's a little bit taller not by you know a shit ton but now it's Mikey with with these advantages so we can see if we saw how how Lomachenko's size cap was definitely one 135 I don't think he should even be at 135 because we've seen the the toll it's taken with his I mean his opponents have been okay you know Linares and uh, Pedraza they're both champions so it's like these guys are are dudes that were once upon a time champions and he basically kicked their butt. Not necessarily like the way he's been doing it before making people quit and stuff like that, but the bigger size we've seen that it does bother Lomachenko in a way and Mikey is bigger. He's slightly bigger. So I would like to see it regardless. I don't care what Bob Aaron says or if, if people really think that Mikey will get our box. Okay, well, I still want to see it. I hope it's not fucking $85 or $75, whatever the fuck people pay for it. But, you know, I just, whatever. I still want to see that shit. Now, moving on to Monday, we did have the press conference for Danny Garcia versus Adrian Granados. That's going to be taking place here at the Stuff Hub or whatever the fuck they want to call it nowadays. I'm still going to call it the Stuff Hub or the gro- the War Grounds. Um, But it, that is happening on 420, so... I know a lot of people don't think Adrian Granados is a legit opponent, but in my opinion, he is. He's never been knocked out before. He does bring game. He He's a very aggressive dude as well. So I think he did great against Broner. A lot of people actually think he beat Broner. So, I mean, Broner, you know, it's Broner now. But regardless, I think he he's a fair game. And because Danny wants to prove that he's still 
top of the division, he's going to want to be going out head hunting and trying to look very spectacular out there. So it should be a good fight. Uh. Sorry. ASMR, guys. ASMR. Um, but also, Andy Ruiz is actually on the undercard of that as well. And he's going to be fighting some Ukrainian guy that I don't know how to pronounce his name. But that's going to be in the undercard so far. And tickets are starting at $30. So I think that's a really great deal, especially at the StubHub. It's, it's, there's no bad seat in there. And it should be warm by then. And it's just uh, 420, smoke a joint. I don't smoke, but, you know, you do it. Smoke a joint. Go watch some fights. Go watch... Crazy Angel do crazy shit, and they'll be much more funnier when you're high. Now, the press conference itself was really short, but they do serve bomb-ass food at the Palm. It was at the Palm in downtown LA. So I was like, bitch, I'm there. The food was so fucking good. I swear to God. They have, like, this fucking chocolate cake for dessert that is so good. Anyway, the actual press conference was really short. It was just basically them announcing the fight, and, and it wasn't, like, as long as all the other press conferences usually are. But I thought it was really hilarious because Danny Garcia basically went the, you know, Tina from Bob's Burgers route and told Adrian Granados that his ass was grass and that he's the lawnmower, baby. And that shit had me laughing really hard. But what made it the whole room laugh even harder was when the microphone was given to Adrian Granados. He's like, yeah, well, you want to cut grass? No one cuts more grass better than Mexicans. And, you know, the whole fucking place erupted with laughter. And I thought that was hilarious because he ain't lying. He really, he really ain't lying. And then once we got, like, the media roundup interviews, like, he was basically saying that he actually did have a gardening business here when he lived here in, in the U.S. Now he lives in Mexico. But he basically says, like, yeah, I used to actually do gardening. So it made it that much more funny. You know, it's it's really cool. Cool dude. I really do hope that it, it's a great fight. Uh, Danny Garcia obviously wants another shot at a title, whether it be a rematch with either of his past opponents, Keith Thurman or Sean Porter, who didn't look as great in their last previous, um, in the last fights. So, hey, you know, I think he's still game. I don't think he should go against someone like Crawford or or Spence because if he lost to Porter, that's just my opinion. I don't think he can he can beat them at all. Actually, that was on Tuesday, not not Wednesday. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But yeah, it was actually on Tuesday, the same day that, you know, Deontay Wilder in Brooklyn, New York basically came out with his statement. He actually had a press conference too at like 9 a.m. over there or 9 a.m. here. I don't know. He had a fucking conference and he was basically where he explained that he was not taking the DAZN deal and he was going to, you know, stay loyal to Showtime PBC and not take the the DAZN deal. But instead, he was going to fight his WBC mandatory and Dominic Brazil. So we all know Brazil already lost to Anthony Joshua. I believe that's his only loss. But I don't want to sound mean, but this dude is, is no threat to Wilder in the slightest because he does leave himself very open. He has zero def- defense and he's basically as one dimensional as they get. Yes, he had like an impressive knockout in his last fight, but even prior to that, he was getting hit with bombs and you can't have the luxury of taking those those punches or being that open against Wilder. He will lay you the fuck out. And if you know, they do have beef. They do have beef prior to to this fight obviously um apparently they got like in a bra at the hotel where wilder's brother basically punched brazil in the back of the head and apparently just a bunch of shit happened and and in front of brazil's wife and his kids so they have beef and brazil's been waiting he's been waiting for this opportunity since like basically november of 2017 because he beat melina and that was his uh, uh, you know he was basically the mandatory after that but because there was obviously negotiations of wilder with joshua and then Wilder with with um with Fury and all these things he never was basically getting a chance and I get it, it sucks because he's a mandatory he should get you know a lot of people don't like mandatory sometimes because they're not big names but hey they earned their spot as mandatory let them fucking fight let them have their shot they, they're probably gonna lose but but let them take a chance we never know you know I think Brazil's biggest uh thing that he says is that Wilder is not fundamentally sound boxing wise and it's true. I mean everybody knows that everybody knows that Wilder has no fundamentals But he has power and and like he said he needs to be He told Fury he needs to be perfect for 12 rounds He only needs to be perfect for a couple of seconds when he knocks you out So I mean, I think the funniest part of that whole press conference thing is he basically told (laughs) 
<laughs> he told Brazil to start planning funeral arrangements. And I thought that was like fucked up as hell. But in a way, I still laugh. I don't know. I'm going to hell, guys. But it's funny because he, we know that Wilder's been saying out of pocket shit like that, that he wants a body in his record, which honestly is fucked up. Because even though we like knockouts and boxing fans like entertainment like that and we like putazos, we don't want to see anybody get hurt in the ring. We know that Pritchard Colon kid and he we, we you know, obviously sympathize for him because boxing is no fucking joke. And for Waller to be saying shit like that, it, it does make you feel like, OK, that's fucked up. You know, like cut, cut, the, cut it out right there. But he basically told Brazil that to start making funeral arrangements. And then he basically told him that he was going to go Mortal Kombat on his ass. And he even, he even said, like, well, I'm going to press A, B, B, C combo or something like that. And that shit had everybody laughing. So, you know, it's not the best fight. I think it's going to be in May. But it's a mandatory. So let's not give Wilder shit. Now, a lot of people are giving Wilder shit because they're like, motherfucker, you didn't take the fucking the zone deal. You could have fought Joshua. Now you're ducking. Now you're ducking. And it sucks because I really don't think there he's ducking. I really don't think he's ducking because he was the one that would go to Joshua's fights all the way in the UK and, and sit ringside. You know, he I don't think Joshua has done that. He would be the one super open on social media about trying to get the fight. But I think what came down what it came down to was the money, as it always fucking does. Is the money I think while there was more uh preoccupied with the fact that he was getting a three fight deal getting paid a certain amount while joshua was getting paid that same amount for just one fight and he didn't think that was fair and i get it you know i i get that you want to get paid and i get that you don't think it's fair because you're also a champion but you know in my opinion suck it up and if you really think that you can beat this guy and you really believe that shit in your fucking heart then do it then just take it. It's not all about the money. You're already rich. He already has. And I, and I get maybe it sounds messed up in my point because I don't box. I don't get punched in the face for a living. If I want, I would probably want to get paid a lot too if I got, got I got punched in the face for a living. I would want to get the most I could. But what sucks is that politics and boxing exist. I don't like them. Most of the boxing fans don't like them. Shit. I bet like in between promoters and networks, they don't like the politics sometimes. But they exist, and that's all we have to do. And this reminds me of when Canelo and the Triple G thing was happening, where Triple G was asking for more money, where people were like, oh, well, technically Triple G is the A-side because he's a unified champion. And yes, if, if boxing was like this perfect fucking world, if boxing was like this really cool fucking dream utopia of a community, it would work like that. Triple G would have been the A-side because he is the undefeated guy. He is a unified champion. Right? That's, he should be the A-side, right? He should be the one getting all the money, right? No. Fuck no. It doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, when Triple G fought in pay-per-view in, against Lemieux, that shit flopped. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't Canelo numbers. Canelo, on the other hand, consistently brings people to watch his fights. You know, pay-per-views, even with guys that we know he's gonna just murder, we still people still pay for that shit to see it, and people still want to... To watch Canelo, whether they want to watch him lose or whatever, but they want to pay for it. Canelo's the one with the numbers. He's the one with the promoter that's Golden Boy. He's who basically, you know, promote him very, very well, and he promotes himself. So it, it doesn't, unfortunately, doesn't work like that. Now that Triple G, I get it. Now he has a DAZN contract too. Um, but before that, who else was he going to make the amount of money that he was going to make against Canelo? Nobody. There was no, maybe Billy Joe in the UK at the Wembley. Maybe that would have been the closest thing. But now Billy Joe doesn't even have a belt. So that's out of the picture. But I'm just saying, if you really think that, and you know that you guys can beat these other dudes who are the A-side in their own turf or in, you know, prove it. I know most people think Triple G beat Canelo anyway. But Canelo didn't, you know, especially in the second fight, he didn't look bad. He actually looked great and. I I was, again, also very impressed with Canelo the second time around. I was impressed with him the second time, the first one, I mean, because he didn't get knocked out. And he boxed well. I'm not like a dumbass that says he ran. <clears throat> but <laughs> the second fight, I was really like, damn, this motherfucker really did stand toe-to-toe with the dude. Holy shit. And he didn't get knocked out? And he landed some nice-ass punches of his own? Damn. Like, what? How can people not, you know, how can people criticize that? But they did. You know, it's boxing. They're going to do it anyway. But that's the thing. Regardless of 
of the money, Triple G was the favorite both times. And I'm pretty sure they fought a third time. He probably, I mean, now not anymore, I think, because he's older. And, and we've seen Canelo can both outbox him, as in going around the ring, and then can also stand toe-to-toe. So I think Canelo beats him more decisively a third time if it does happen. But regardless, politics exist and they suck. But... I think these guys need to take the risk. It shouldn't be about money. It should be like, well, I think I can beat this guy and, and I'm not going to get the same money fighting literally anybody else. Wilder can't fight Fury anymore. That was his next big big fight in the division. Now Fury's with top rank. I don't know why. They just announced he's fighting. I don't know who the fuck. And, and it sucks because now it's like, okay, well, Fury had just said, oh, I, I won't let politics stand in the way. And when he tweeted that, I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's going to top rank. And he did. And I was like, yeah, I knew it. And it sucks, though. It sucks because now that fight's not going to be made. And now that maybe, you know, Deontay staying with Showtime, I don't think that fight with Joshua's going to get made. So when are we going to get, like, an undisputed heavyweight? Like, the boxing world needs this. We need an undisputed heavyweight. And it could have been easily made had these fucking dumbass politics not played a part. But they do. And it sucks, but they do. And I think the B-side, which is Wilder, whether he likes to admit it or not, or whether he feels like he should be the B side or not, it needs to happen. Because let's say here in Alabama, whatever, Vegas, New York, Barclays, wherever Wilder fights, he would never make the same amount of money if he would fight with Joshua, let's say, at the Wembley Stadium. And I get it because people are like, oh, well, he would get a flat fee, and that sucks. I think that's bullshit. It should be like 60-40, in my opinion. Or, you know... Something like that. 60-40. I think 60-40 is fair. But even then, it's like, okay, not just a flat fee. Like, okay, here, you're going to get paid this, and we're going to make everything else. But imagine Wilder versus Joshua at the Wembley. That shit filled 90,000 people against Klitschko. So imagine uh, this fight would also be hella epic. It would be a lot of people in attendance, a lot of pay-per-views if they did it, you know, pay-per-view, what, or the zone, whatever it would be. But it would make so much money. Wilder can't, I don't even think he can even sell out places here in, in the U.S., but he would be able to do that over there against Joshua. So again, this is just my rant about politics. Yes, they suck. Yes, we all fucking hate them. But people, the B-sides need to realize that they're the fucking B-sides and kind of be like, okay, well, you know, I, I have a good chance of beating this guy. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to make money. And if I don't beat him, hey, I'm going to put up a good fucking fight. You know, so I, I just wish that it wasn't like that, but it is. So let's see what happens with the heavyweight division because Brazil is not going to do anything against Wilder. At least I don't think so. I'll be very fucking surprised if he does, but we'll see. You know, we have we have three main guys. I guess four of you want to count fucking Dillian White, but it's, it's three guys. It's Joshua, Wilder, and Fury. Those are the main guys. They're all on different networks. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, can y'all just fucking fight and shut the hell up? About money? God. And another thing, I remember when King Kong was, was with uh, Eddie Hearn or with, you know, whoever the hell over there. He he got, like, signed under them. And they promised him an Anthony Joshua fight. And that Anthony Joshua fight never came. They never gave him the Anthony Joshua fight. So what if Wilder was, you know, thinking the same thing? It's like, okay, well, you're promising me a three-fight deal, but it's not necessarily a for sure thing with Joshua then why do it? You know, that just means three more years of me maybe not even fighting him. I don't know. I didn't see the contract. I wasn't there. That's why I don't get why people get so fucking invested in bickering about this shit on Twitter or, or on, on Instagram. You weren't there. You're not their promoter. You're not their manager. You don't get to see the contract. So why are you guys acting like either one is ducking? I don't know. I know I know how this looks back bad on Wilder, and I think he's dumb as hell, too, for not for not signing but he must have his reasons and it's also always comes down to pettiness you know it, they're fucking petty if if he doesn't like you know the zone or he doesn't like Eddie Hearn he's gonna be like no fuck you type of thing and then they know they need each other so none of them will like budge they know that Wilder needs Joshua to like basically prove himself and they know that Joshua kind of needs Wilder too and and they're both not giving in and again, I'm just tired of it, tired of politics, but this is the fucking boxing world we live in these days. <laughs> now, so moving on, the zone basically broke Twitter, broke all social media yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday, right? Yeah. When they announced that they would be actually moving their monthly subscription 
to a higher price, doubling in price. So now if you want to get the zone, it's going to cost you $19.99 a month for the monthly subscription, obviously. And it just brought me back to what to what Sugar Ray Leonard said at the Canelo versus Jacobs press conference where he told me he's like, yeah, you know, Dizone is basically the Netflix of boxing. And I laugh, but it's true, you know, because yes, it's a monthly subscription, but people can share passwords. I know I don't pay for the Dizone. My friend pays for it and I just, you know, I just use his password. So it, it could be, how are you going to make money back after paying these guys Canelo and and obviously Joshua, and then you have Triple G, and and now you're gonna try to get Wilder too, which he didn't go. But imagine if Wilder would have signed, it probably would have gone up to twenty five dollars a month. Because how do they expect to make money back or even break even when you have this subscription for? It? Even though people are bitching about it, I don't get why. I mean, it's hypocritical because I don't pay for it. But I would if if my friend didn't like offer me his password, I would have definitely sign up for for ten dollars a month it's not bad because you do get boxing every every week basically and i know most people are like oh well they're not good cards and they're no big names but i, I guess that's more personal preference because i will watch boxing anywhere anything i don't care i can come home and i see there's like box azteca and i don't know who the fuck is fighting i'm gonna still watch it if i come home and there's fucking boxing in telemundo i'm gonna still watch it if i go home and there's uh in estrella tv there's fucking boxing little dudes coming up guess what i must have watched that shit like i like to watch boxing regardless of whether it's big names or not obviously when it's bigger names uh it's much more interesting or i know people only want to watch championship fights or eliminator fights or fights that matter in rankings or that matter in 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 boxing but i like to watch everything that's why i go to local local boxing fights because i like i just like to watch putazos and i like to see how these guys develop you know, so maybe when I see them on TV one day, like on a big card, I'm like, hey, I remember that guy. He fought this person, you know. But I, I again, I don't think the zone was a bad deal at $9.99, but I'm surprised it took this long for them to to rise up the price. I was actually expecting them to start doing pay-per-views, too, with their bigger names like Canelo, AJ and, and Triple G. Now, I was really expecting them to be like, OK, well, yeah, you're going to pay the monthly price, but you want to get this particular fight, then it'll be like thirty dollars. You know, so I would I would. Assume that because that's what they do in the UK. I think in the UK, the pay-per-views are like $25 or some shit like that or euros or whatever. So I'm not, I'm, I was expecting they would do that, but now they just raised it to $10 more. However, they do have the, uh, they do have the option of doing a yearly subscription. So it's a hundred dollars if you want to just pay just, you know, for the year, hundred dollars for the year. And then you get to have the zone for the entire year. And you save twenty dollars basically because if you were to pay, you know, nine ninety nine, they're gonna leave shit. They're going to let the people that are already signed on or who already got their trial and then cancel it. Like I got the trial and then I cancel it, and I still got the email saying, "Hey, you know, trying to bait me. I know you know we're rising up our prices, but if you choose to sign with us right now, then we'll let you still pay nine ninety nine up until March of twenty twenty. So they're giving you a year to still pay the nine ninety nine a month and then basically if you want to upgrade the next year to the yearly subscription then you can which i think it's a really good idea like you can test it out you can always cancel you know test it out i know for those with commitment issues because i fucking have commitment issues i'm not gonna lie i think that's the biggest problem here boxing fans don't want to pay in advance for something that they don't know they're going to like but at the same time okay look at the guys that they have let me tell you know let me try to convince you as to why this is not as bad Look at the guys that they have. They have, you know, the bigger names are obviously Canelo, which fights two times a year. They have Golovkin, who should fight two times a year as well. He usually did three, but, you know, he took forever coming back and he had a baby and I get it. So he he also fights regularly. And then Anthony Joshua, who also fights around two times a year. That's three guys that fight two times a year. And who Canelo, who usually fights pay-per-view, would have been like $80 alone just on one pay-per-view. So you have three guys in rotation. That shouldn't be bad. That means every couple of months there should be a big card. And then you have cards like the one coming up on April 26th with, you know, the, the rematch between Ron Visaya and Estrada. And those are, that's a good-ass card. You have Dan Roman uh, unification by, about a super bantamweight. You have these cards that have nice names. They may not be champions or super mega stars, but they are good names in the boxing world. And, and I honestly don't think it's a bad price like 
I get, again, I get the commitment. It's just, I think this guy tweeted something like, oh, why am I going to plan? Why am I going to pay for the whole year when I don't even plan on being alive that long? And that's, you know, that's just Twitter humor. But it made me laugh because true. But again, it's not that much of a bad deal. And mostly it's just a commitment issue or just hating the zone or hating the streaming. Because I know I felt like that when the whole streaming shit came out, the zone, ESPN Plus. I'm like, bro, can I just watch my shit on the TV? Please, you know, but I think it's like basically back then when we switched from analog to digital on the TV and we had to get rid of our antennas and get like converter boxes. It's like the same thing. You know, it's transitioning into a new thing. It's accepting that fucking HBO is over. It's over. And and we're, we can't accept it yet. I know I can't. You know, it sucks. It sucks because even Showtime, who usually does their fights in, in the TV or whatever, now... It's they have undercards on YouTube and stuff like that. And it's just hard to transition, I think. So I get it. But you guys can always, you know, choose the nine ninety nine right now for a whole year and test it out. You can cancel whenever. Test it out and be like, hey, um, should we should, you know, is it worth it to kind of have another year of this and maybe try to do the, the the yearly thing? Or, hey, say tell off homie, be like, hey, homie, now that the zone is is going up to 1999. How about you cancel yours and then we just split it and I give you my password so you guys both pay $10 and you guys still both get the zone. Hey, check out a box in here with the solutions. Hey, share your account. Charge like, let's say four of your homies have the zone password. Be like, hey, $5 each a month, bitch. Hey, let's do it. You know, or once it goes, right? It's just, it makes sense. Uh, zone, please don't, don't come for me. Please don't sue me. <laughs> But again, my argument is just we have guys that are that are big names fighting in this platform who fight regularly. So there should be good fights regularly for a hundred dollars a month. That's cool. And, and I guess, you know, it's expensive as fuck being a boxing fan. Again, I don't pay for shit. But if you have the zone, let's say you invest a hundred dollars, that's a hundred dollars there. Let's say you buy pay-per-views. What? There's like four or five pay-per-views a year at like seventy five dollars each or like eighty dollars if you want it like an HD or whatever and then you have showtime that's like fifteen dollars i think it's fifteen dollars if you just have it like on your laptop and if you have cable services i think it's like ten dollars just to add it i don't know i don't have cable like that so i don't know and espn plus is five dollars now i do need clarification if anybody could tell me is is espn plus an expansion of espn like do you have to have cable do you have to have ESPN packet on your cable to be able to get the ESPN Plus for an extra $5? Because I remember when I first got my trial, all I did was put my email, password, and credit card information, which I later obviously canceled. But the, it didn't ask me for like a TV provider. And now the other day, I try to log in with somebody else's account number. And it's like, okay, cool, but send us your provider information. And I'm just like, what? So let me know because I, I was wondering about that, you know, what, how that's gonna, that's gonna work. But yeah, it's like $600 a year if you want to be a, a, an avid boxing fan. It's just like, bro, can other people just pay their monthly, you know, cable shit and they still get the sports, you know, it's just, man, it, it's, and if you go to live fights, it's even more expensive because that's like from 50 to like. $200, $300, or if you go to big, big ass fights, like $5,000 per ticket. So shit, you know, I, I could afford to take my, my family to a baseball game every, let's say once or twice a month. I can't afford to go to all the fights every fucking month. And we have like good fights back to back. That shit gets expensive. So again, the zone obviously shocked people with this because that's what they should have done since the beginning. You know, they should have done that initially, but they did it, and this guy actually posted on Twitter like this image of Brazzers.com basically saying that Brazzers is also $920 um, a year if you want to subscribe to Brazzers. So now you're left with this dilemma of do you want to zone for $100 a month or do you want to just pay the extra 20 bucks to have Brazzers a year? Like just the whole access to Brazzers.com. So hey, choose wisely, boxing fans. Now, moving on, we have seen a lot of pictures and videos of Marcos Maidana back in the ring. He's shedding those pounds. They did announce that he might 
actually have about at 152 or 153 before going down to 147 and i don't get it i think we should have just we should just wait we already waited this long for him to return and we should might as well just wait until actually hits 147 but i actually also get how they're just trying to ease him back into the ring comfortably you know instead of just immediately into 147 but again i don't get why they're going to 147 that's basically the toughest division but i think at this point it's like a three fight deal or something i don't see how this is not basically just for show just for spectacle just for nostalgia because we know that he's not going to be the same dude that he was be before he retired obviously so we have to wonder what kind of guys are they going to be putting him against i think he's going to be getting like the b C level PBC guys because they don't want him to get knocked out his first fight, you know. So I don't know who he's gonna go against. I love Chino. He's you know personally one of my favorite boxers ever. Not in base of accomplishments because obviously my other favorite boxers are like legends. But this guy, I love that he would get knocked down and he would just get up and kick your ass and continue to try to kick your ass. And he did great. You know he lost against Amir Khan, but he almost had him. He almost had him. He, the, you know, his fight against Victor Ortiz was fucking cool. He fought, obviously, he fought Mayweather, which I think a lot of people think that he won the first the first fight. Um, he had a lot of good fights. Obviously, the fight against Adrian Broner, he just completely changed Adrian Broner's career. He was never the same after that. So I love, I personally love Chino Maidana, but I, I we have to really be realistic and be like, okay, he's not going to come back to be the best in the division or give those sick ass explosive fights he used to give he's just back for show and for nostalgia and for the fights who didn't get to see him fight back then can come back and and see him fight again so i will gladly love to see his fights and just await his return i'm excited regardless of who we fight now this week also the top rank sent out a press release that Carl Frampton is actually now with, with Top Rank, which honestly hyped me the fuck up. Because if you know, Oscar Valdez has, has said that he wants to fight Carl Frampton. That that would be a perfect fight, especially stylistic-wise. They're both like super busy and aggressive. I would love to see that shit. So this is just one step closer to having Valdez versus Frampton. I'm very excited for that. Hopefully, you know, in the summer or, or later on this year. But I would love to see that. So I'm excited for Frampton now with top rank. That basically tells you Frampton versus Valdez coming right up, bitch. And speaking of top rank, we also have some cards tomorrow at in Costa Mesa at the hangar. That's basically the fairgrounds, the Orange County fairgrounds. Um, we have, I don't know the main event much. I know it's some heavyweights, some uh, foreign heavyweights. But I think the best card on that fight is basically Jesse Magdaleno, the former WBO Super Bantamweight champ against... Uh, I think his name is Francisco. Hold on. Let me pull my shit out. Yeah, not Francisco. <laughs> Rico Ramos. He, this guy used to be a WBA interim champ. So he had like a very brave, you know, interim title at one point. He's 30 and 5 with 14 KOs. So I think this is like a make it fight for him. Like he has to make it or else he's basically not coming back probably or not ever going to get another shot. And I think... And I think Jesse should definitely have a nice challenge with this guy because we know what fucked Jesse up is the inactivity. You know, he was supposed to fight the guy that um, Dog Bay beat before facing him. So I think I think the inactivity is what, what made Jesse lose his title to Dog Bay because if you know, Jesse's a fucking badass. He... he He's a southpaw, but he also boxes really well. He has really nice footwork and a nice little pop behind his punches. So, if anything, I, it sucks that, that he lost the way that he did because I know that that was inactivity or maybe, you know, taking his opponent lightly because because if you remember, he, he dropped a dog bay in the first or second round, I think, and then he got a little overconfident and then he kept getting dropped and then he got dropped, I think, in the seventh round. I think he got, Jesse got dropped, but then the next round he came and he still outboxed, he went on his southpaw stance and he still outboxed the shit out of Dog Bay after being knocked down. So it was just, I think, the pressure from Dog Bay, not just that, but also the fact that he had been in a ring rust. Ring rust is a bitch and we've all seen it. So I think now again, this is, it might be the same thing here where he's been out of the ring since April. 
of last year. It's almost been a year and, and he's finally fighting again. And I think, you know, Jesse has everything that it takes to be a champion again at the bantamweight and the super bantamweight division. I mean, but he needs to fucking be busier. He needs to to have a more, you know, more fights back to back. And I know he has shit going on. Maybe his promoters, maybe his manager. Who knows? There might be some shit going on or around there why he's not fighting regularly but if he wants to go back to being a champion he definitely needs to fight more regularly and he's young he's still a young ass kid he has one loss that doesn't make anything i think he can definitely winning this fight is definitely going to bring him closer to hopefully trying for a title once again and you guys know how much i love donnie roman that's like my favorite dude like i love him but (laughs) i think if jesse was the same jesse he was prior to his inactivity he would kick his ass. Jesse would outbox someone like like Babyface because Babyface is so calm and he he kind of you know goes to your rhythm and beats you at your rhythm, you know. And and Jesse wouldn't let him do that. Jesse would control the pace, and I think Jesse would just outwork him. That's just my opinion, but who knows? I think this fight will be very telling on how Magdaleno looks, and and obviously I don't think he's gonna go right away to another big fight but he should have a fight where he's you know growing in challenges and just staying busy i think staying busy needs is is the key for him to go back because jesse magdaleno is a badass and he's a hard ass motherfucker i i fuck with him heavy both inside and outside the boxing ring um but at the same time we did know that he left um manny robles and then he was with like the benavides senior at one point and now he's with capetillo so it's also could be just the change. It's just constant change. He went from training here in Norwalk to training in, you know, Vegas and Arizona. And it's just all, it's just a lot. So hopefully he can get his rhythm back because I'm definitely cheering for it. Peligroso, Magdalena. Now, lastly, I just want to close this off with still no news who Triple G's new opponent's going to be. I know that when Abel talked to me, he basically said that he knew they were going to pick a top guy that they're basically going to take the Canelo route and fight somebody not as great, somebody low tier because, you know, because of because of Triple G's inactivity, basically, because he hasn't fought since September. So they need him to go back in the ring and ease his way in. Right. That's basic. Uh, sorry. That's basically what Abel told me. And his exact words were basically like Canelo did with Rocky Fielding, but better. So, I don't know who he's going to choose to fight uh, Golovkin. I do wish it's somebody at least okay. Like, you know, we just saw Suleki beat Rosado last last Saturday. And if you didn't watch that fight, you need to go watch that fight. Because that fight was badass. Rosado was getting his shit handed to him all fight. He got dropped like two, three times. And then he came back to hurt Suleki in like the third, I mean in the in the tenth round. And he had Suleki hurt. He had him hurt. He dropped him twice in one round. Then he... Luckily, Suleki survived, so he was able to win the fight on points. But if you haven't watched that fight, you should go watch it. And Suleki looked good. If you don't know who Suleki is, he also fought Anthony... Uh, no, he <laughs> he also fought Danny Jacobs, I think, after the Arias fight. And he got dropped in, like, the later rounds, too. But he survived the whole fight with Jacobs. So he's he's a good dude. He has a, a nice um nice style, but he, he does get caught and obviously is prone to getting knocked knocked down. So I think that would be a good fight for Golovkin and it's still like a relevant name. So I think that would be a good fight. But who else really? I don't know because they're obviously not going to feed him to, to a boo-boo right away or, or the other way around. So we'll see who, who they fight. I'm going to insert a clip of what Abel said here. As a coach and as a uh, uh... Somebody's going to have Gennady in the gym. He hasn't been in uh, in a fight since September. Uh, Canelo had three fights, three tough fights in a row, and then he fights Fielding. We had three fights in a row, too, that were tough, and uh, there's no reason why I, I would want to put Gennady in a fight uh, that's not necessary for the first fight. He's been out of the gym. He will have been almost nine months before he gets back in the ring. So uh, uh, if I have my say, it'll be somebody that's not at, the, at that level but a little bit below that level, just like uh, Canelo did with Rocky Fielding. It'll be better than Rocky Fielding. All right, guys. Lastly, congratulations to Ryan Garcia, who had his baby girl this week. And, you know, that's cute as fuck. You know, he's having a baby. A lot of people are like, oh, he's too young. But, hey, he already had the baby. Let's hope he does right and pays that child support. I hope the baby mama secures the bag because, as we know, he already has another girlfriend. He, like, left his baby mama. I'm the FBI. I already know all this shit. I've been knew that he had a girl pregnant since, like, way back. But we're not allowed to talk about it, obviously. 
Um, however, congratulations to him. He does have a fight coming up next Saturday at the Fantasy Springs uh, Resort and Casino in Indio. And I suggest you guys check it out. Joette Gonzalez is going to be on the card. I believe uh, Nico the Rooster Macias, the guy that literally looks like he's on Mountain Dew and crack when he's fighting. He throws like over a thousand punches per fight. You guys should definitely go watch it. It's going to be streamed on The Zone as well. Again, March 30th, Saturday. I believe it's going to be at 7 p.m. But if you can make it out there, you definitely should. That that venue is really cool. It's uh, it's very uh, intimate. You do have like a lot of... Uh, it's like basically a high school... It looks like a high school gym, but it's awesome. There's live music. There's alcohol. And it's just a great, great atmosphere. And I suggest you guys check it out. If not for Ryan Garcia, because for some reason you don't like him, you can definitely check it out with another one of Golden Boy's cards. But don't give the guy too much, you know, too much shit, guys. I get why you wouldn't like Ryan Garcia, but understand that this guy's coming up and they're molding him into a superstar. The thing is that he needs to learn to be molded as well, because let's say I I know a lot of people were like, oh, well, he won the 12, the 10 rounds with Jason Valera. See, he's exposed. No, shut up. Like, these are the fights he needs. This kid needs these type of fights to learn to adjust and learn to adapt and learn to take direction rather than just go out there and knock this kid out. Knocking somebody out in three, four rounds is not going to do shit for his career because once he gets to the, you know, tougher opponents, he's not going to be able to have the stamina either to go the the rounds or, you know, it's I, and I know now he's with Eddie Reynoso and that's going to help, but don't give him that much shit, guys. Let the kid come up and try to prove himself. And just, you know, let's let's wait. Let's see what this guy can bring. I think he's, you know, very talented. He just needs to learn more. Obviously, he's prospect. And I just don't want him to become the next American because speed doesn't necessarily mean anything if you don't have anything else. You know, so again, thank you guys for listening. Rate this five stars and comment some shit. Tell me to shut the fuck up and make you a sandwich. I don't care. Whatever. But just comment, uh, subscribe, like. Share it with your family and friends and your grandma and your baby mama and your side bitch. Say, share it to everybody. All right. And I'll see you guys soon. I think I'll see you guys around. <laughs> Don't forget to go on our Instagram and check out a boxing and YouTube, check out a boxing and for the news, check out a and LA 10 Lily on Twitter. I honestly, again, don't know why the fuck I tell you guys my my uh social media is because i'm pretty sure if you're listening to this that's where you're coming from but again have a good day guys and enjoy your weekend